Hello, I'm Dennis O'Donnell, Vice President of Precision PCB Services, Inc. And today we're going to do a demo on chip removal and then installation on a large board. I have the board um, set in the fixture right now. And we're going to go ahead and um, I put some thermocouple on the bottom close to the chip and at the solder balls. And we're going to run a profile we set up in here and try and bring the uh, melting temperature up to between 230 and 240. Um, and then I'll uh, remove the chip. It uh, should be about a seven or eight minute profile. Since this is a thicker board, um, we've added a uh, preheat, about a 100 second preheat time to bring it up to about 90 C. So right now we're in here, it's everything's, I would just go to my um, controls here. Let me show you what we'll do. We're gonna do an alignment. Right now our chip's in the camera, the video screen, we can zoom in a little bit. And basically I just want to make sure that my chip is centered to the pickup tube right here. So it looks centered, so I'm just going to hit a desolder command. The head's going to go down going to sense the component and then it'll back up so that there's about a two and a half millimeter space between the pickup tube and the chip. And now we're going to go ahead and let it run its profile uh, to see if we're going to reach the heat that we expect to heat, that we expect to reach. Okay, so we are getting close to the uh, reflow temperature. Right now our thermal couple below the components 223. Our thermal component at the um, solder ball is 220. Our thermal couple over here on the top side of the board by the chips is reaching 180 and we don't want to get it much hotter than that because we don't want to reflow components there. On the outer board we're having about 110 temperature. Just about 2.30 right now, let's see where we're at. So I'm just gonna probe it, yep, it's loose. And we got about, um, so this will be a good profile. Reflowed, got about 2.30, just 2.30. And we have about uh, 30 more seconds to go, so we're almost there. There, so look. Lifted the chip fine. That's going to place it. Now we'll go into our cooling phase. Um, we're getting some warpage on the board, um, but uh, that's probably the best we're going to get the profile because we don't want to take the uh, the area under the board, uh, to, you know, believe uh, above 100, 180, because then you start worrying about getting components on the bottom side that become liquidous. So this profile should be just about right. Um, like I say, you can see if, if you're close, because the board warps down a little bit, but we'll see how it goes when we put the uh, chip on. Okay, so we are um, about ready to put the new chip on the board here. So we have placed the chip in the upper nest, so the chip is right here in the upper nest where it's going to be picked up. Let's make sure that that's nice and square. I'm going to add some tacky flux to the board. I've already put some flux on the bottom. I brushed a little flux on the bottom over the caps on the bottom side of the board. And we already brushed flux on the uh, capacitors and resistors around the perimeter of the ship here because they are going to be getting warm. Now we don't want too much flux. We want a sort of a thin coat. So I've got a thin coat of tacky flux, and that should work out good. So what we're going to go to the to the uh, touch screen. We're going to press the pickup command and pick up the component from the upper nest.
Okay, so we should be able to see our component on the screen here. I'm going to go to the micrometer just down here and adjust these a little bit. So what we'll do, we're going to zoom in. And you can see our, I'll zoom in a little more just so you can see on the video better, hopefully. Our solder balls are blue and our pads are gold. What we want to do is we want to line up these solder balls. I'm going to go to the top of the uh, screen here. I need to move this in a little bit. There we go. I want to make sure our board's clamped down. I have some supports underneath holding it up. So the board's pretty solid. I'm going to try and hold it straight. Let's go back to the other way. We want to make sure that the uh, solder balls are straight up and down. So they're off over here, so we're going to turn that to the left a bit. What we'll do is we'll work this up and down until we make sure that the lines are perfectly straight. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the, at the solder ball here, the pads there. I'm just going to go down this roll again. Okay, so it's straight up and down vertical. We are concerned on this particular board, um, you have open vias. And what happens, the solder gets down on those vias when you're solder wicking. There is a chance that the solder can come out and outgas and bridge. Um, so we're going to try this one component. If we have issues with the solder outgassing, what we need to do is we need to take the chip off and all those vias that have solder in them, like right here, 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 um, you have to plug them up with some solder mask prior to putting the chip on. Um, but they are open on the bottom, so we're hoping that the, uh, if they outgas, the outgas on the bottom, which they normally do, and not the top. So I'm just going over here to check my left corner. We can see I'm off a roll, so I'm going to move that over. Our left corner here is lined up. I'm going to go to the right corner. Right corner looks it's right on. Go to the lower right. In the lower left. It's pretty close when we go to the middle. And, just, and basically, the last thing we do is once we make sure everything's on square, we're going to go back and we're going to line it up in the middle. And so I'm going to zoom back out just so you can see. There's our component full view. We can move the uh, prism in and out to get the, the center where we want to view it. And then again, just to give you an idea of the zoom. We're going to zoom all the way in, and that's zoomed at 100%. Focus the solder balls a little bit better. There you go. So there we are. Our solder ball is the blue, pad is the gold. We just line those right up. Zoom back out. It's ready to place. So I'm going to place our solder, hit our solder command. I'm going to go down and place the component. We're going to watch here. I'm watching to make sure we get a clean release. I want to make sure that the uh, pickup tube doesn't stick to the uh, chip. I'm going to adjust my lower nozzle up a little bit for support. And now we're going to let our profile run. Okay, so we're getting near the end of the profile here. 15, The board seems to be supported pretty well, so it's not warping that much. The so support's good. I'm looking, it looks like it's completely reflowed. Um, a little sooner than expected. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, check our temperatures. Yeah, and it's just into the end of the 
Oops, profile. So we're going to stop it because I'm pretty comfortable that it's down all the way. No. It'd be real nice. The board stayed pretty straight. I'm sure it's warping a bit, but we have it clamped in place and supported so that it won't disturb the uh, evenness of the solder of the chip when it reflows down. So it looks like it reflowed nice and flat. Okay, so our installation went well. Uh, went on nice and even, and just going to go some, over some some of the features of the machine with you. Uh, so this machine is the SV560A. Um, something critical when you're doing bores this thick is that you have the um, area heaters that will heat up the boards. So we're able to bring this board up in certain areas as, you know, as high as we had up to a little over 100 degrees on the bottom side board temp. So preheating the board with the area heaters is going to reduce warping. Um, without these, then the, the board's going to warp and bow a lot. Um, this type of machine, uh, one of the inconveniences is that the head is stationary. And so if I have a chip over here, I've got to move the board out this way. And so basically just turn it around. So what happens is I'm not preheating as much of the board as I can. Um, but for this board, it seems like it's it's working okay. But also, like I said, if, if you run into warpage, then it's nice if you can preheat up the whole board. Our next model up, the E6250, we can put our board directly over the heaters, and the head actually moves forward, backward, left, right. So I can move the head over to the edge of the board where I want to heat the component, and then my whole board is getting completely heated when we're doing the reflow. Uh, you want to know one thing about this board? You have all these can caps and these will get heat damaged, they'll explode, they'll, the plastic will melt. So if you're doing components on this side of the board, again you're going to need the heavy preheat. You're going to need to remove all these caps because they'll melt or they'll get damaged. Um, these connectors, they're high temperature connectors, so as you can see there's no problem with the connectors. They won't melt from the preheat. I think for this particular board we had our preheaters set at about 240. So, you know, there's a distance between the board and the heaters, so you're not really getting up to 240. Uh, with the preheater set up 240, we were getting about 100, 105 on the bottom side at the highest point, and around 90, 95 on the top side at the highest temperature point. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, oh, no, actually, I, I stand corrected. At the highest point on the bottom side, we were getting up to 180, and then the top was about 150. So um, overall, the, the most of the board was about 98, but the the area near the nozzle gets hotter um, and I say we're, we're dealing with lead free solder that melts at about oh 220 um, so I'm not really worried about 180 or 200 board temp as long as I don't have any lead solder on the board uh, but having said all that um, so we had a successful install went good um, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching